Hi! <laughs> Hi! Welcome to Five Tooth Combs, the podcast for obsessives. My name is Jamie, my voice sounds like this. My name is Janine, and my voice sounds like this. My name is Matt, my voice sounds like this. My name is Bunny, I sound like this. My name is Shani, my voice sounds like this. And I'm Jake, my voice sounds like this. Hello everyone, welcome back from the Christmas break. Everyone have a good time with your families? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Christmas happened. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. Parents were I don't know about lovely. you guys, but Bunny and I ate like assholes the entire month of December. Well, pretty much gained eight pounds directly on my hips. I basically ate like we do whenever we do the podcast. It was just sugar <laughs> But every pounds. day. Every single day. We like to call it the sugar cleanse <laughs> at Christmas. Yeah. And it's been it's great. It's like the opposite of the master cleanse. Yeah, it's the sugar cleanse. And I think it worked because I haven't gone for three weeks. So obviously, <laughs> I'm running at peak efficiency. <laughs> I'm just absorbing all the nutrients. <laughs> yes. Uh, really once good. in a while I crap out a cubic zirconia. <laughs> I've heard it, I've heard it <laughs> Uh, Matt, what do we do on this podcast? We talk about movies that Jeffrey Combs is in. Mm-hmm. Who's Jeffrey Combs? He is a story B act, B movie actor. <laughs> uh, also uh, uh, very prominent in the Star Trek universe. That's true. question. Who isn't Jeffrey Combs? Yes, it's true. Yes. Like He's in all of us. He's like Spartacus. Yeah, everyone stands up at the end and says, I'm Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, and so we were going to watch his entire filmography in order. As best we can, there have been hiccups because... Because. <laughs> because, because, but we start we're only with, human. We're yeah, only we human. are only human. None of us is Jeffrey. We're only human. <laughs> so, and all of us are Jeffrey. <laughs> all right. So tonight we watched 1991's The Giver, starring Mark Hamill. Not to be confused with MacGyver. Not MacGyver. No, no. Yeah. I was really excited for like at least two weeks because I thought we were watching MacGyver. Oh, we're gonna watch Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, kind of was the same way. I'm glad it wasn't just me. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. It's Jeffrey Combs is in MacGyver. Yeah, so no, MacGyver like, made yeah. a movie, <laughs> and Jeffrey Combs is in it. This is great. I'm learning two things. No, it's based on a Japanese manga. Yep. Uh, and uh, it's sort of a monster sci fi movie. But before we get into the movie itself we were talking about, we usually talk about what we made, and it's usually somewhat themed yeah. to what the, the movie was. So, Bunny, what did you make? I can't remember what the actual name of it is, but it's basically those little, um, it's like a red bean pancake sandwich. So, yes. two little soft honey pancakes, uh, you know, with. They're called red Dora bean. Yakis. Yeah, Dora Yakis. Yeah. Dora really Mom's good. favorite snack. Really? Yes, yes. Your favorite blue cartoon cat. Loves exactly, those. Mm-hmm. yes. Um, I actually kind of wanted to like make a salad, like just a plain salad for you guys. And be like, look, it's a salad. And then what I actually really wanted to have made was just something like, again, something with six cups of like icing sugar, mm-hmm. and then haul that out and make you eat that this anyways. Is, this is probably one of the least sweet things you yeah. made. Yeah. It yeah. was really good. Yeah. yeah. They were delicately, you know, flavored. They were, they were complex. Yeah. Yes. Delicate. Yeah. And you brought us uh, a series of soft cheeses for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. We relaxed in hammocks and we ate them. <laughs> and then the reason we made the Japanese uh, ba- kind of dessert was because today's movie, The Giver, was based is based mm-hmm. on a Japanese manga series. Yes, which apparently it's a high school kid who finds this suit or Xbox One, however. A modest yeah. youth. Yeah, a modest youth. Yeah. We'll get to that. Who's directed by Screaming Mad George, which I know you laughed at the second you saw that on the screen. Yeah. Oh yeah. His original, his real name is uh, Joji Tani. He's from Japan, and he's known for special effects. So he did special effects in Bride of the Reanimator, uh, Predator, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream uh, Master, stuff like that. So he had directed only two other things. This one of them was a short, but this is the only feature he directed. But as you can see, he worked on tons of movies. And I had to, I'll just go through the characters. So we have. What do you think you're doing, young lady? So we start out with uh, Mark Hamill. He was Max Reed, and he was a uh, he was a grizzled cop, I guess, or something like that. He's a cop that wandered through a men's warehouse. Yes, yes, he's uh he's got comically it's the '91, so the clothes are like you could fit three Mark Hamills into his jacket. Looks like he's wearing his dad's jacket. See, I wasn't really paying attention at the beginning, so mm. I was sort of making up like my own, like who is this guy? And he is uh, the guy that has a white band with a teardrop shaped window with yep. puppies. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's yep. who he looks like. Yeah, he does have a, the river. Like he pulls up to the park and is like, "Timmy, your mother told me to." Drag you home. Yeah. He's that got, mustache? He's got a herby stash that took you guys a while to realize that that was Mark Hamill. Yeah. yeah. If you can picture a person that wears socks with sandals. Yeah. And a fanny pack. That is all of the That's Pacific it. Northwest. <laughs> yeah, so you got a fanny pack in there and then like. And the van. 
the van, and he's again the '90s clothing. Like he's got that red shirt with two horizontal buttons, not vertical buttons, horizontal. Yeah, buttons. It's, a, it's a plain Redundant old. It's, it's, it's a semi turtleneck, and it's got a high collar at least. Kind of like a button down. Yeah, and it's got two buttons right below the uh, solar plexus or what have you. Sternum. It's sternum. sternum. It's like near the thorax, I believe, where, right? where the silk is produced. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to visually evoke a vest and failing at every step. Yeah, and he's got a huge jacket that looks like it's his dad's hunting jacket. Yeah, yeah. totally. His dad was gunned down horribly. Now he wears it to remember him. <laughs> he's By older than his dad. Yeah. Why don't his dad die? This movie. Yeah, but he looks like yes, but he looks like the guy from Simon and Simon, not the guy who went on to play Major Dad, but the other dude. The blonde. <laughs> Simon and Simon. I don't know. Simon. There's, there's no way of knowing. Yeah, not Simon. <laughs> the guy who played it's Simon. Simon. Not exactly. Oh, mm-hmm. Simon. Got it. Yeah. So no, 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 no. We have Simon. Not. Who else is in this goddamn movie? Oh, Jimmy Walker from the <laughs> 70s Good Times, a show that I never watched, might. but I know. Yeah. I only Everybody recognize knows who Jimmy that Walker. one guy. What uh, one guy? Mark the guy. Campbell? No, because he had the porn stash. <laughs> so I didn't actually recognize him. Um, can't remember the na- actor's name right now. From Reanimator? He's with the two watched. Oh yeah, that guy. No, no, uh, the guy with alopecia, among other. Oh, no. Michael Berryman. Thank you, yeah. Michael he, Berryman. Yeah, he does not have alopecia. He has hypo, hypohydrotic ectodermal dysplasia, which means no sweat glands, hair, fingernails, or teeth. But he's so in. He, to, uh-huh. he was in Wes Craven's uh, Hill Have Hills Have Eyes, the original one, and I remember him from Weird Science. Because it affects facial features as well. Like his I ears so. are a little lower and. Yeah, and yeah. Whatnot. He looks amazing for like creature features and what have you. He's yeah. got the perfect face for it. He's yeah. been typecast. He's a good actor. Uh... <laughs> he's been typecast. <laughs> uh, so he's in it. He's uh, one of the. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? It doesn't even yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, yeah, and we've got Mark Hamill, Jimmy Walker, uh, and then we've got David Gale. Right, we've fathead. Wa- we watched a lot in these movies. He was in Bride of Reanimator. Uh, he was the guy who had the bat wings sewed to his head. He, he gave won. the big oh. eater out as a yes. yeah in the, he, in the original and yeah he had his head that, cut off yeah. and then <laughs> of best. course the evil clergyman where he's the rat faced horror that watches um, yes. Barbara Crampton give Jeffrey Combs a blowjob yeah that was a great episode it so really was <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's about it for people we generally recognize there's someone called Spice Williams who I've never heard of Oh, I thought yeah. we decided that that was the the female wrestler. Yeah, that is yeah. her. Yeah. That, okay. Sp- yes. Spice Williams. Her name Spice is Spice Williams. Williams. I don't know what she. She tried. looks spicy. Mm-hmm. You, thought, you thought she was burly spice. Burly spice. Burly spice. Burly spice. 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 Yeah. She's so. Totally she got dropped spice. from the bill right at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> so turns out we don't really need burly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in general, <laughs> Bunny's losing it. <laughs> She's so burly. She really is. She looks great. She wears like sort of. Uh, like chainmail tank tops? No, not chainmail, like it... leather. Like leather yeah. style, yeah. like yeah. biker yeah. top. She's like, like a high waisted denim. She looks like she's from the Warriors. Yeah, Mad Max or something. Or WWE. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's flash, not flashing. Everybody's fashion is super on the nose, so like Hamill's the cop, so he wears ridiculously large, like, cop clothes. <laughs> With and the then she's staff. a tough girl, and Michael Berryman's yeah. like the, the, the second in command, so he wears like. All black, and then trench coat, and then Jimmy Walker is the black character. So holy <laughs> shit! Oh my god! <laughs> he's tra- wearing an onk, obviously. Yes, he's Chain. got lots of he chains is the on. He's walking and stereotype. Yeah, he he, he jive walks, he raps <laughs> several times. Yeah, yeah, his several lines are urban stereotype. It's, oh god, it gets bad, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, so these are our group of characters, and what's the general plot of this movie? Like, I have what's no happening? Yes. They, I'm not even going to attempt it. I they know open it up with a Star Wars esque. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a crawl, of, and they yeah. they talk about the Zeo Zeos. Zeos. I don't care. I'm not Zio looking it up. Zio yeah, Zio yeah, Zio I'm not, I'm not looking it up. Yeah, yeah it, it's just some sci-fi word for like enhanced humans with it, like yeah alien seeded yeah uh, like their DNA into specific. So humans. this is Prometheus, is what you're telling. Basically, me. basically, yeah. no, yes. they, it was it all specific humans or all humans? No, no, no I think no, it was just, just some, some got just it. Some. Yeah. Okay, but like, but humans were like the, the ones like that the were pro one point oh right, <laughs> and like the the like mega animal like whatever Zia Knights or whatever are like two point oh. Okay, so we're talking like the Windows ninety five, Windows ninety eight. Yeah. Or 98 SE? Yeah, second yeah. edition. No, I, yeah. These are in terms that I can understand. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's there's also the Giver, which is yeah. some crazy weapon that is a shield for it's, all people, but will transform one of the right people into... Simon Says version 2.0. Yeah, yeah, so if these sort of humans 2.0 can find this thing... 
it they makes can them eat, unstoppable. They can make them unstoppable. Oh, they're sort of they're more higher powered already, and they yeah. can transform. We'll get to that. But they, uh, if they can get this, they can rule the world. The gives galaxy. them gives them a second layer of foam. Yeah, over top of their <laughs> <laughs> layer of foam. That's a on top With of this Velcro skin. rather yeah. than a zipper. Yeah, yeah. and they're, they're, and you can wear your UCLA T-shirt underneath. Exactly. It's oh totally, God. and it's breathable. It has off gassing. It's Sean Barker, played by Jack Armstrong, is the is the Baca. modest youth. So obviously, no, not obviously, because nothing's obvious in this fucking movie. But <laughs> he, it's, he's good at Aikido. Yeah, it's, he's good at Aikido. He's they, that's where they, they introduce him. He's not good though. They introduce him to playing Aikido, and he but keeps he's, failing. He, yeah, he's, he's, he loses every he wants, round. He's got the he's got the touch. He just doesn't have the discipline. Yeah, yeah. he's he's, he's, he's distract he's distracted by his the, his lady love. Yeah. Mac distracts him. Oh yeah, there's an actor, an Asian actor who looks like Mac from It's Always Sunny. Yeah. yeah. Constantly <laughs> kicks his ass. Yeah. yeah. But he is distracted by Mark Hamill for some reason interrogating a young lady. Is he interrogating? No, he's letting her know that her father died. Her yeah. father who was working on unlocking the secrets of the guy. Yeah, Dr. Sukiyama. Dr. Sukiyama. Right, right. Sukiyama. He yes. tries to run away with this guy because he knows David Gale, who plays the head of these of these dudes. He's got a suit. He's the really CEO met. of uh, Chronos. Chronos Corporation. Chronos Corporation. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Obvious core. <laughs> Obvious core. <laughs> so he, uh, they're, they want to get the powers of that so they can rule the world. Uh, the doctor uh, is like, no, fuck that. So he tries to run away with it, stashes it before they manage to kill him. And, um, uh, and managed to kill him. And then we see our first transformation scene right then. Yeah, we see that all these people, because they're sp- special, human 2.0, 2.0, can transform into, what do they transform into? They're, they're like, they're, 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 yeah. ki- they're like mini kaiju. Like, they, they all have like animalistic themes to their powers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have Power Rangers. Okay, so we got... They look like insects, though. Let's get to... Right? Th- yeah, kind of. of. So we've got... Goblins. We've got Jimmy Walker... Who looks like Jar Jar Banks? Yes. A sort of slightly a black version. A, okay, oh, we hit the nail in the head. Wow. <laughs> can, can we be more we, racist we, with our? I, the no, movie no. did it. I didn't. I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, probably yes. No, it, it was bad though because we see three stages of his transformation scene. Like as he he walks behind scenery and as he comes through each viewpoint, he has changed more. Yeah. And the first scene from you know human going through the transformation into his next stage. The only thing that's really changed is his lips on his face are massive. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, Maybe we're just sensitive, but are they red? I he, did, he wraps the chain but, stay well, on his monster body. Yeah. yeah. The onk for sure. Nothing else stays on except for these people's jewelry, and his jewelry stays on. And you're right, like he he jive talks. And he, and he, and he wraps. He wraps all of his stuff. It's pretty It's pretty insane. on the nose. Yeah. And, and then so we've got the uh he his best buddy is a fat Nazi guy? Yeah, he looks more like a metalhead. He, he has an iron cross on his chest. Yeah, yeah. like, oh, know. and he's just a grunt. Yeah, and he he turns into the weird uh, elephant guy that has the law of oh. that is either for eating termites he's or for his nose head. It's for eating pussy. Yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> he's a very attentive lover. <laughs> oh, he's giving. And then we've got Spice Williams, who turns into. Uh, owl uh, tit Sasquatch. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Owl tit Sasquatch. Yeah, so she's got a sort of an owl face. She looks kind of like Quildor from the Masters of the Universe movie she, she's with still giant like, titties. She still looks, as, they all kind of look insect like to me. Even Do they? the ones well, like. There are, there are secondary characters that are bugs and shit like that. Those were the ones that they were experimenting on. But yeah. like, and even, trying to infuse even when she had them. the hair, it was like a moth or something. Like, yeah. You know. And well, then, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like a moth. the other character, uh, Michael Berryman. Transforms into a cyber demon from Doom. Yeah, he's got like this crazy third eye thing in the center of his face. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah it's it's almost dragon like as yes. well. Yeah. So uh, our modest youth, of course, is gonna happen upon this thing that they're looking for. And he does. He does. The girl whose father was killed trying to hide it, he totally wants to take to the bone zone. So that's how they sort of get intertwined. Mark Hamill is trying to solve the mystery of all this, but he unlocks the secret of. How do you make the Giver uh, super armor work on you? How do you do it? You get, how do you activate you the Giver? You fall on your back, and you hold it against your forehead while you fall. Oh, I thought he fell right on I his think it's face. Yeah, 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 you sort of fall face first. He fell was face, face forward? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I thought like, he was like, on his back like looking up at right? no, it. Well, he so, rolled over, and then he was so like, like oh, oh, and they did the transformation. <laughs> It, it's like a what safety. Ca- what she- it's like a safety cap on medication. You can only open it one way. That's face first. Face down, ass yeah. up. Yeah. And so, might as well get into the effects in this movie. How are they? Um, the effects. There's pros and cons. Like, yeah. like the skin. 
on the on the monsters. I thought was really really good. Yeah. Um, but they're all exactly the same height that the actors who play them are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like. Well, they're supposed to be transformations. Doesn't that make sense? But but they, they look like they're wearing rubber monster costumes. The the you know um like Godzilla. Like they move in that way. The skin on them looks really good in my opinion. It's it's Power Rangers. It's but I was if, gonna say it's if like you Power watch Rangers Power Rangers, Rangers those costumes yeah. that the, all of the baddies have. Yeah. The big yes. foamy. Yeah. You could tell the actor can't really move too well in it. No. Yeah. <laughs> but this is making it sound like they're bad. They were really, really good costumes. Yeah, I think they were. Yeah. Really, I think the effects were great in this. They just yeah. remind me of like Power Rangers with a bigger budget. Well, yeah. So, so they're goofy and they're sort of childish, but they were, they, they were talented. They were good. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, and then. Joe um, Henson, full size. Yeah, but you're right. They're all sort of samey except for the end boss. Yeah. And a lot of it is these are sort of. Uh, Slightly oozy sort of monsters. Everything's uh, a little uh, slippery and shiny. A little slippery, like beating the crap, fighting with the guy. Yeah, yeah. The fight scenes were kind of samey, I think. Yeah, and it was they were very long, with the same exact choreographed moves. It was basically punch in the stomach, a foot swings past the screen. You know, like the same kind of. Yeah, it, it was. It, they would go on and on and on, and then it would something little would happen to kind of change, and then it would just start over again and go on and on and on. It seems like it was edited like heavily to get the PG-13 rating because yeah. you had these long fight scenes but there was no payoff with very little gore. I think we only see one or two of these creatures die. Yeah. Yeah. We saw, yeah, the doctor at the beginning. And Well, they the died. doctor at the beginning got his head crushed. They didn't go, well, like, true. there was no explosion of blood or anything but you could see some skull claps and so, okay, we they dove a little bit into the gore of it and then we didn't see anything else until the saw blade. Oh, the saw blade, yeah. But and even then, there was really no blood or anything. Yeah. It was just a saw blade inside this foam but character. Owl t- hit Sasquatch got killed, didn't she? <laughs> she got slashed by his arm, in which he thought he killed the girl as well. Right, but right. it didn't show really any blood. It just, his arm blade went past her face, and yes. she dropped his it to the ground. This, yeah. it's, it's another thing it, with this movie in terms of what the movie was trying to be, with the effects and what they were showing in terms of gore and the creatures. And... What they were showing in terms of like comedy scenes and everything like that, like they would pick the strangest times to be goofy. Yeah, like, like super goofy comedy. Like the movie set. Yeah, they were in a chase scene, running away it was meant to be as far as the movie can go. It was meant to be intense. Yeah, yeah. So the music and everything suggests like, oh, he's just trying to escape. And one of the monsters stumbles onto a set of a monster movie, and yeah. the director mistakes this real monster. For a character being played in his movie, because apparently he has yet to see the costume, <laughs> doesn't know what it's going to look yeah. like till day one. <laughs> and as Matt says, it would have been an okay scene yeah. if it took 15 seconds, but they just drag yeah. it on. The monster goes, and then he sees this crappy monster guy standing there, like it's a double take. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> "What happened?" And then they just drop it. It was yeah. most sometimes the monsters loop, move real creepy and alien-like, and other times they move like Muppets, like double yeah. takes when they're going out of the scene and everything like that. So it, it's super uneven in tone. Really, yeah. Uh, and what they were talking about, and whether, what kind of... Sorry, I was babying. Like, yeah. did you mention the fact that they, they're constantly doing that, like, constant, like, motion? Yes, like, that moving like they're dubbing it over, although they're not. Yeah. Like, well, they're always, like, overacting everything. Yeah, they overact, and they also do a lot of those scenes where it's just, like, a power stance. Well, that's what, you know what I mean. mean like, like, they'll show like the... Like, when you're in a fight scene with, like, like, typically, like, a, like a kung fu movie or an action movie... Where like all the bad guys are waiting for their turn to go with the one with our with our yeah, guy. Yeah, they're yes. doing that kind of moving in the background all the time. That like, is a lot of necessity. They don't just stand there. Everybody waiting their turn when they're fighting the Mexican gang made of white people and Japanese people. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this movie didn't really hold our attention. I don't know, it was really promising for the first half hour. It's like it had a really good pace. And like this is sort of dark and the effects look really cool. And look, there's Mark Hamill with a mustache. Yay! And then, and then every, everything just takes a nosedive pretty much as soon as the action starts because it becomes a monster movie that, I guess, it, mo- it moves really slow. Yeah. It's, it's a monster action movie that where the action is consistent but slow. They also, mm. like I mentioned earlier, they also create a lot of, they try to get you to feel for certain characters and scenes, but they've done absolutely no background work to establish a connection with the audience. For example... Um, what's her name? Mizuki or Mizuki? Mizuki? What's the name? Miski. 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 Not Misty. It's Miski. M I Z K Y. That's right, Miski. So Miski's character meets Mark Hamill. I can't. Max. Max. And there's really no interaction. And then all of a sudden, there's a scene where he's getting kidnapped or beaten up by the monsters, and she's really worried about him. Like, oh no, please don't. Well, and this is right after the Guyver 
uh, spoilers dies for the <laughs> yeah. first part. He melts. He yeah. melts into the ground, which is a super. And it's scene. just like, where is this connection in these two characters? Why are they so connected? And why do they care about it? And why do we care about it? Did them? they establish much of a connection between her or uh, what's his face, Sean? Other, no, other than the fact that she was standing there watching his Aikido class. And then he seemed very upset when he saw her crying in the other room. Right. And, and then he, chased and her down and then... He knows where he where she lives because yeah, so he can come over and... They must have out. some kind of background, although they don't really say. They just... <laughs> it's just is. Like I said, connections and relationships and things in this movie just are. Yeah. They're just yeah. there. Why? Doesn't matter. They just are. It doesn't matter. It's just poorly written from that standpoint yeah. that where they really aren't drawing the lines. <laughs> and what well, makes it difficult to suspend disbelief in some cases or even to like connect with the scene that's happening you know it's like i that's where you lose your attention that's where you just don't you don't care yeah, yeah. about this it's like oh they're trying to do a heartfelt moment when really we just want to see more of that slapstick punch style that these foam creatures are doing yeah but um like as we were saying before though when we do get the slapstick punch style and, and the fighting it's it's dragged on too long when there's not a lot going on people waiting their turn to get their ass kicked yeah that's true lots of haymakers yeah <laughs> board <clears throat> kicks so we, we haven't even mentioned our man, Jeff. He's in this movie, right? He is, eventually. And, and eventually. It's kind of exactly how it was during the movie. When we were watching, we got to a point where it was like, are you sure? Are you sure, yeah. Yeah. sure he's here? Where is, is he? Is did, be another, did we miss him? Yeah. Is another, he in one of the costumes? Another one or robot jock situations where yeah. you see him once and never again. But he's Quick. got he's been got, a few movies now like that. Yeah, he's got a bit of an extended going. scene in this one, though. Yeah. He is Dr. East. Does anybody yeah. get that joke? Yeah, he was Dr. West. Dr. Yeah. Herbert West in Reanimator. Ah, I so, missed that definitely. So the first thing we see is him being goofy, trying to um, dis- uh, incinerate uh, yeah. something that, mutated, that doesn't want to be incinerated. <laughs> he's fighting, he's, he's, so, fighting he's it pretty down. goofy, and yet he's hamming it up. He's got another scientist guy. He's totally hamming it up, too. They're like buddy-buddy in the and lab. We don't see him long before he transform- transforms into a Baphomet monster with a tie and glasses. It yeah. looks pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah, It looks pretty great. But... Yeah, he's in it more than we're not talking reanimator style, but more than Robot Jocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. more than a dozen. Yeah, he's, he's, just the one scene. But. Yeah, he's got a few lines in this one, and he sticks around for this character does not die. Spoiler. I think doesn't he die? He no, he, not not right away though. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Like, like he has a little bit of time as a monster. Into a monster. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, we see him more than a little bit. Yeah. So, but how is Jeffrey in the role? Did you? Uh, he's so good. Yeah, he's very Jeffrey. He as made a human. use of his like sh- brief time. Yeah. Uh, not in a costume, if that was even him in the costume. I, I guess, I don't know if it was, I don't think so. The movements and stuff, even though I know they're probably They somewhere. used his voice, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it was somebody else inside yeah. the costume. Okay. I thought, I've got to say that David Gale, though, was great in this movie, oh, yeah. too. Like, he's just, just as pervy. Just roaring at people. We forgot to mention the, that they sort of established that he has telekinesis power. For no reason. He gets Michael <laughs> Berryman to punch himself in the, the face, face in his office when he fails him. And, and he, he almost he gets him to rip his... Me. Yeah. Oh, is that what yeah. that's? So he's like, it's like, he never just, mentioned that. Just either. like in Reanimator. Yeah. Yeah. He does no, have from, a third From eye. Beyond. From Beyond, beyond. yes, yes, yeah. The he little, the, the forehead thing. penis. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Starts so, coming out and all sorts of crazy shit happens, but then it just... So during these... The worst red herring I've ever, ever seen. It's yeah. like, what? He has this ability. The implication is that he's one of the... The Lord, Xena Lord. Xena something. something. But he never uses that ever again. No. Like, nope. never. But David Gale is great. He's like just roaring with anger in those scenes or he's really syrupy, uh, sweet when he's trying to get people to do what he wants. But he still has that devilishly creepy face. Oh yeah, there's always scenes that are trying to get back down yeah. into He's doing his really stomach. creepy things and, and I think we made the comment that he only takes movies where he has to lick something because yeah. he's always <laughs> or doing something skeevy or Oh creepy. my god, and he does it he's really so well. good at it. And he yeah. super is, yeah. Hey man, he's great. he can collect a paycheck after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was great seeing those guys doing their sort of reanimator thing. It sort of feels like a uh, Stuart Gordon movie, even though it isn't. Weird, sexy stuff. Uh, yeah, so Jeffrey is... Uh, is this a good movie in general? Would you recommend this movie? Uh, no. Oh. No, no. I mean, it depends. If you're into the genre where you like to see the foamy costume, if you like, you know, like Guar or like oh, Power do, Rangers. Do, do if, not put Guar hey, in the I'm, same category. Take, take the music out of it, but just I'm talking about like the, yeah. the comical kind of foamy costumes and things it, like It really is like, it's like maybe a slightly upgraded Power Rangers sort of yeah. situation. Yeah. So unless you're really a fan of like the costume monster. Yeah. Yes. Thing. Don't go into this movie expecting a story. Don't want, don't expect to be gripped by the acting, but have fun with the effects and with 
you know, like then it'll then it'll work for you. It depends on how you enter into the experience. Yeah, but that's just it. So unless you were that one specific <laughs> subset that has just been described, we I would not recommend. Sounds like they'd only recommend it to us. Yeah. <laughs> well, and even then, like, yeah, we all I think can agree. So we have a hard time watching it. Yeah, I don't think anyone would watch it again. No, no. God no. No, uh, is it no? It's cross off my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> is this a good Jeffrey movie though? No, no. no. Not even it. Wait, well, I mean, if, if you just want to watch the clip on YouTube of the yes. Jeffrey scene, just to see Jeffrey, then no. fine, yeah. Do cool. uh, you guys have a favorite part? Something you really enjoyed about it? There was a line that you really enjoyed, Matt. There's yeah, pretty they, crazy line. They're beating up the Dr. Sugiyama. Or turned was, into a tuna fish? Yeah, yeah. He's and, a tuna and, he's, and, he's, and he's like, something about like, you're in the can now, yeah, tuna for, man, or yeah, something like that. Like, your tuna fish is canned <laughs> or something. Great. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's like, what the... Maybe that joke about being a masochist, but it was, some sort of kind of ma- I but it was going in the wrong. I did like it when he made made Michael Barron and punch himself in the face. Yes, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, I can't think of anything else that really jumps out of me. I, I liked watching it, like because again, up until this point, like the humor's been kind of lost. It falls flat. Their attempts at humor. So when we do get to meet um, Jeffrey and he's fighting to get his creation into the incinerator, like yeah. that's always good for a chuckle in my books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what about a worst part? I would have to say Jimmy Walker, his character in the rapping alien thing. Ooh, <laughs> dynamite. That he said dynamite is the last line. the last line of the movie, the movie is him going dynamite. You can't have, Jer- have him in a fucking movie without him saying that goddamn line. The, the, I don't know why I'm so mad. Here I am. It, 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 it's stomach turningly bad. The raps were painful. It's they like, were bad. My name is Alien and I'm here to say I'm here to Alien in a mighty way. Yeah. Already better. Already better. That's yeah. definitely a worst part. Yeah. Although uh, tedious, I can't think of anything else. It wasn't super offensive. It wasn't boring the shit out of me, but it bored me. There was not the shit been, out of me. There's been worse. There's been worse. Mm-hmm. You, you, there wasn't any long, longing shots of the oil industry. <laughs> oh my god, what movie was that? That was, was that one with. Uh, that was Dead Man Walking. Hauser Common yeah. Wing. Yeah, that was with the blue shells. Hauser <laughs> Common Wing with the blue shells. Uh, so I guess we'll go to ratings. You guys want to rate this? You know how let's, this goes. This. So it goes from uh, one to five. Hated it, didn't like it, liked it, really liked it, or loved it. Let's go to Jake. I'm giving it a one. Let's give it a one. Hated it. Yeah. Dude. Wow. Yeah. Not one. not really for me. Yeah. I don't like that Power Rangerish kind of thing at all. Like there was some funny things just like to mock at, but no, no. That at all. that's what get, got it. It's one. Absolutely <laughs> hated. It. Okay. So one from Jake. Funny. Absolutely a one. Like mm-hmm. it just it's too middle of the road for everything it's trying to be. Like like a classic Godzilla movie wasn't trying to be funny, mm-hmm. but it's funny because of its spectacular failure, like an Ed Woods movie, right? Mm-hmm. Or else I mean you can go the other way and then it's actually just genuinely good, right? Mm-hmm. Um whereas this is just trying to be a PG thirteen movie that's just like is it power rangers like it, it seemed undecided whether it wanted to be genuinely scary like more like a fly or whether it wanted to be a power rangers movie and still it was pg-13 that's okay that's something worth mentioning before we get to mm. that myself that it does feel like it was edited a lot like there's a lot of cutouts of like kill shots and what mm-hmm. have you it's just sort of edited like it's trying to appeal to little <clears throat> kids or what have you and apparently there's a there's a director's cut or something on there. I wanted to watch the theatrical version for purity's sake, of course. Yeah. But apparently there's a director's cut out there. Do you think this would work better if um, there was more gore, there was more of that, if there was if there was more meat to it or something? You could see, does the movie work better if you, you see more of that stuff? Do you think it would change it? It would make it a little more entertaining for people that are absolutely hating it. Mm. I think they would have had to take so much out of the other stuff mm-hmm. to make the tone fit. The monsters are really cheesy. Like even though they're now you know transformed into into these alien creatures, they retain their human voices and are like cracking really shitty jokes at mm-hmm. one another. So it's just like yeah, like the the, the bad raps. It's just so. So they'd have to take up so those things would feel off tone rather than the, the brief glimpses of gore and stuff like that we see in this sort of goofy family movie. Not a family movie. <laughs> no, it, it can't be anything. That's it, Bunny already said that. It's like it tries to be all these things but fails on every front. It's mm-hmm. like it doesn't go all the way on anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's you page don't, five. Yeah. yeah. It's tap water. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, 
Matt, what do you think? I give it two out of Ooh. out of five, and it gets two points, oh, one point for uh, for Jeffrey, and it gets one point for the 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 black mayor from RoboCop Two oh, being yeah. the corrupt cop. Yeah, yeah. In this movie, yeah, so I forgot he was at that. So you were very excited about that game. Okay. Well, RoboCop Two is one of my favorite movies, well, so that's a it's a terrible movie, but it's one is of that my favorite Verhoeven? Movies. Uh, no, I think someone else directed it. Ah, uh, okay. Because they could, like, Verhoeven didn't like the script. It's like uh, Frank Miller wrote the original oh, yeah, screenplay. Oh, yeah, that's right, right. And it was originally much darker than what was shot on film. And But th- there's still elements of the body horror he wanted to do in that movie. Mm-hmm. And that works really well, and the, the stop motion's really good. But It's better than 3. Oh, it's, yeah, 3 is just a fucking... Is, I, I pretend is 2 the one with the ninjas? No. Okay, that's no, two, just, three, yeah, and, the, and the jetpack three is terrible. It's, and now, uh, what the fuck's his name? Um, is it? In, uh, he didn't even in it. The guy. Uh, Peter Weller didn't do the third one. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Uh, I had to give it a two. I didn't really hate it. Didn't like it either. But it had some moments. First half hour, I was excited, and then I got bored shitless. <laughs> <laughs> so not, not particularly good. So let's answer some IMDb questions. There's some pretty good questions, actually. I think I know one of them. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so we talked about, you know, who would have thought this could have been better if it had a bigger budget or anything like that. Uh, how much? Someone actually happy to know that someone else is a creep. They're wondering how much is Jeffrey Combs in this movie, and they're like, they think he's so damn cute, and I really want to see him in it. But is it worth watching this movie just for him? And we thought, no, nah, it's not worth it. You must forget. Yeah, go, like I think Jake said, go on YouTube and just watch. <laughs> watch the clip. You, just I'm go sure on you YouTube find and it. watch the clip. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we should probably tell this uh, this person about our podcast, though. Actually, this yeah. might be the one person who's into what we do. <laughs> I would. Yeah, sure. Then we'll have ones of listeners. <laughs> ones of listeners. Uh, goops. Who really cares? Yeah, we talked about Doctor East. Is yeah. Apparently, the film featured over fifty creature effects, but. Doesn't really help, but I guess like that. And I think that's about. Oh, here's that. Uh, where are the the fights? People were talking about. Uh, so, what do you guys think? MacGyver versus MacGyver. Who would win? MacGyver. 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 Why would MacGyver win? Because he is like astute and observant. He's a well-rounded <laughs> yeah, character. Yeah. Yeah. He's been developed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, MacGyver versus Venom. Oh, Venom! Destroy him. Yeah. Why is that? Because it's Venom. It's Venom. <laughs> this guy's. Is- just the Guyver. Yeah, he's, he's Venom got versus the Guyver. Yeah, Venom would win. Okay, absolutely. Give us reason, Venom sir, because Venom would use his symbiote to go through the holes in his costume and <coughs> suffocate him through the nose. Like but what Venom about the guy? Unless he's not actually wearing a costume, he is a, like a like a mix. His DNA mixes when he's that thing. And what about Venom? The, still, is what awesome. about the Guyver's chest hadouken? He could that couldn't stop. Uh, uh, that only seems to happen when well, he gets use, getting ripped open. Venom right? would use <laughs> his sh- his shield to shield himself from the blast and then fight him from the outside. Mm-hmm. Guyver was very ineffective as a fighter. Yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. He was just a he second skin. He's like, oh, I have armor now. Okay, and really can't do anything else. The Guyver versus Spawn. Who oh, Spawn. 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 This is easy. Guyver zero on all fronts. <laughs> Guyver versus me. Me. And you'll be Guyver happy. versus my grandmother. Your grandmother. <laughs> my grandmother. You can, you'll getting be happy. the trend. <laughs> you guys will be happy to know that of uh, these three questions, the one about MacGyver has the most responses. <laughs> so people are really thinking about that. There are actually quite a few. I counted four separate ones where people are pissed off about the cover. And why would they be pissed off about this cover? I've got it right here on my phone. What is it about this cover that you think might piss people off? I because they make it look like Mark Hamill is the guy. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and, and I'm not even kidding. There are four separate um, threads in IMDb where people are like Mark Hamill is not the guy. Where this will not stand. Or people <laughs> that guy off. kind of looked like a younger. Yeah. He Mark looked like Hamill. a yeah. Mark Hamill's kid. I think we can under I agree though that four posts on IMDb constitutes a movement. And I think <laughs> we'll see real scene and depictions of Mark Hamill. On vi- movies posters change in our lifetime. I want to make yeah. like a, I have bigger movements in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the okay, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Janine, did you like this movie? You didn't really watch it. You watched part of it. Well, I saw about five minutes of it, mm-hmm. and the five minutes I saw seemed terrible. Mm-hmm. So, You're not wrong. Not wrong. Um, did I enjoy it? Yes. Would I watch it in its entirety? No. Mm. Uh, who do you think won in the fight, uh, the Guyver or MacGyver? MacGyver, definitely. Yeah, we have a consensus. <laughs> Buddy's grandma. Yeah. Buddy's grandma. Okay. You have a good friend. Hands down. Yeah. So I guess we'll move on to recommendations. Buddy, do you have any recommendations? I've got two recommendations. I feel like I'm on a roll for movies that don't suck. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the first one is uh, Predestination. There you mm-hmm. go. 
that was that was fantastic. An Australian know. movie from last year, yeah, 2014, with Ethan Hawke and yeah. an Australian actor. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need really to say anything too much that gives too much away, but it is a a movie that deals with I don't want to say time travel, time shifting, to, yeah, time, time tra- existence. Tra- it's time a complete and absolute mind fuck. Yeah, hands down. Um, tail eating its snake. Yeah, yeah forever. Eating its it's snake. not not yeah, an inception. Well, it's not an Inception type of mindfuck, where it's like, that wasn't really a mindfuck. It's mind like fuck. Memento. Yeah, yeah it is, it's Memento and Looper. What, sort of put what, what, about, what about the, the um, what's it called, the one, the indie one that's really good, um, Primer. <laughs> yeah, Primer, I've what's actually that? never seen. If I you've never seen Primer, you've got to see Primer. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, and then I always get the No, I have a better recommendation. For yeah. So, uh, Predestination, yeah. Ethan Hawke, it's an Australian movie. Yes. And most of the actors that we are, there's only two actors really, Ethan Hawke and this young woman. Based on who wrote the, the short story? Oh, Robert Heinlein. Yeah. Hi, oh, yeah, and Heinlein. Heinlein, 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 however you pronounce it. And he's sort of got a cool thing. He always deals with existence and time and yeah. heredity and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, Weird sex. Yeah, it's good. Definitely yeah. don't read Don't read anything about it. Just yeah. watch it. Just watch yeah. it. Yeah. It's then, riveting. Kept us on our seats, which is uh, rare. My favorite actor uh, and pool boy wish list. Keanu Reeves oh. in Mr. Was it Mr. Wick? John, John Wick. John, John Wick. Wick. Yeah, we John just watched that too. It was, it was so good. Like such a good. It's it's just a good action movie. Oh, like I the love premise. Keanu. Yeah, I, I just I love Keanu Reeves. So first of all, you can do no wrong. But it was, I recognize that Keanu Reeves can be Keanu Reeves in movies. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, he's Keanu Reeves in this movie. Too. And, and he is, but there are movies that works more movies that it doesn't. Yes. Right. He doesn't talk very much, which helps. Yeah. Exactly. It's exactly. True. Yeah. What happens is. So, so this guy, John Wick, um, this gang breaks into his home after he they perceive an insult from him at a gas station. They beat him up, uh, destroy his favorite car, and then kill the dog, uh, his dog, his dog. I'm not going to say anything else. And um, turns out they have fucked with the wrong guy. The baddest motherfucker that ever was, yeah. Yeah. who's retired. The who's guy retired. you send to kill the boogie. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, his, his code name or whatever is Baba, Yaga. Baba Yaga. My gripe was that Baba Yaga is not the boogeyman. No. Well, you know, I was talking about that with Jamie, and it, it's a good translation, I, I guess. Say, it, it's like a synonym for, right? Kind like, of, it's like, a, Baba a Yaga is an is old boogeyman. It would be more like the boogie woman. She's an old woman that lives in the woods and eats children. And her house is on chicken feet. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty specific. So, but anyway. anyways... Um, really, really. <laughs> Americans will never know. Besides that, <laughs> uh, really well choreographed fight scenes. Um, oh. Just a satisfying ending. Uh, yeah, everything about it. Like, it was a feel good revenge it was, movie. It, yes. it was unique in the way that. A feel good revenge movie. Revenge yeah. movies usually follow the exact same line, and this one doesn't really differ except the characters take a different stance other than like you know the big bad guy is definitely gonna i'm gonna get you i'm gonna fuck you up at first he's genuinely nervous uh-huh. they create a they different some, tension some slight different there's tensions. changes so like you'll get thrown for a little bit of a loop along the story path where yeah. it's like this isn't your typical revenge flick although it is it's, mm-hmm. it's just really satisfying it deals with assassins yeah. too which is really yeah it's, it's got a lot of yeah, interesting elements, and it's an all-star cast. Ian McShane, yeah. a bunch of people I can't remember right now. Which so I'll just say Ian McShane. Him. Yeah, like do we like is who, that who, guy? The, is that yeah. the guy from Fringe? The guy who played the concierge? oh, that's Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The world's most oh, yeah. beautiful human being. Oh, yeah. He's also got one well, of those voices that are very yes, very yes, yeah, perfect. Very, uh, yeah, so that's yeah. great. Uh, so, yeah, both he, of those movies. Yes, and, came out last year. Yeah, and even Rotten Tomatoes, they give it eighty three percent. So it was hate everything. And that's just it. They hate everything. So if you're wary of like the whole Keanu Reeves thing, this is not really his kind of Yeah, right. even Jake like it, and he doesn't like Keanu Reeves. Oh, I don't like. Him. I know. He oh, is, dude. He's gonna be my pool boy Shade. one day. What do you recommend? Um, do I'm gonna say, oh man, Boyhood. Only because I literally just watched it last night. I enjoyed it. Eh? Doesn't have to be a movie. It's Anything a, you've been enjoying recently? So like Boyhood. Yeah. I haven't been mm-hmm. watching a lot lately, which is odd. But yeah, Boyhood was good, and so was Birdman. We're obviously we're watching the Oscar. You know, oh, so so you're Birdman. ruining mine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, fine. We're going together on this. Oh, yeah, you gotta recommend I'm sorry. Birdman, sir. You can she just recommend spits one, out all the movies. Recommend you want. one more thoroughly, <laughs> if, you, if you like. So what, you see, what did you like about Boyhood? 
I think I just love both of those movies. I like that they were a unique idea. Like maybe Boyhood isn't the most riveting story, but it's, I don't think it's really meant to be. It's just an interesting film experiment, I think, to like film something over 12 years. And instead of like trying to hire actors that look nothing like a child actor and then be like, this is this person grown up to see an actual kid grow up. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't, I don't mean I to be dismissive, but is it a gimmick movie? Is that the only reason why it's interesting? A little bit. I would say yes, but I don't know if that makes it a gimmick. It's like that makes it interesting. It's like, Blade, are you showboat? They, they also, <laughs> yeah. I'll give them this. Watch it and see. You might not like it because it's very slow and it's just. It, it, yeah. They also took the character paths and didn't make them uh, cliched. Do you know what I mean? That's like, good. Like, yeah, there's see, a few I times have, where you I think, haven't watched like, it, and I've heard uh, mixed reviews. Like, and some are, people are, love it, some people are like, yeah, it's okay. But I'm just, what I'm saying is that. Is it a gimmick movie? But a gimmick movie isn't necessarily a disparaging thing. If it's good enough, it's interesting enough, it'll work. Well, in that sense, Birdman, I would say, is more of a gimmick movie. because That's the know. long shot movie, right? Like, it's, yeah. Okay. And I mean, that's... So we'll, we'll move on to Jake. Uh, no, here's the yeah. question, though, for Boyhood. Okay. Would you watch part two called Manhood? Like, if it came up, would you, would you be interested to go see that? If it was the same If they took if another 12 the years actors, yes. yeah. from that. Yeah, the exact same act took another 12 years of this part of his life or whatever. Yes. It reminded me a little bit of Blue is the Warmest Color in that it's like covers a long period of time and it's very emotional, but there isn't really a plot. Like, so like stuff just happens. It's a character study, sort of like a Paul Thomas Anderson movie. Like, they just sort of end, which yeah. is fine because yeah. you've had all this amazing character development. Yeah, it's sort of about the nature of life and what's important. <clears throat> and yeah, so Jake Birdman. Yeah, the other movie that we watched, it did them both last night. <laughs> we watched them both back to back. Oh, yeah, but it was amazing. It was Birdman. Yeah. It, we originally downloaded because it's like we want to watch Zach Galifianakis. We like comedies. Okay, sounds good. We're in. Never heard of it before, mm. and it turned out to be sort of a dark comedy. It wasn't dark, but it was just a very dry comedy. But it was an absolute awesome, unique experience for a movie. The whole movie was filmed as if it were one continuous shot, like the rope that yeah, the movie. entire movie seems like it's that way. Um, it also goes through the mind of a washed up action actor who's now written a play for Broadway and he's also battling sort of some inner demons that are unique so I won't go too further into that like but a potential psychotic break so yeah you, so but, but not in the okay. dangerous perspective it sounds interesting of, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to I want to see it but well, I haven't like, read much about it it kind of crosses over like the trying to capture realism like what the long shot is doing and the fact that Michael Keaton is kind of playing himself yeah. Like they reference like Birdman, he was Batman, Batman like and it came out in 92. They referenced that Batman his last returns. movie was in 1992. Yeah. Like there's a weird There's a, there's an overlap there for sure and it's good. It connects well. And Ke- Michael Keaton plays an awesome role at this. Like you actually are wow, I'm into this. I'm interested in what he's going to say next or do next or how t- like you'll see some weird things that happen and as the movie goes you're trying to make sense of them, but then they do a good job of snapping you back to reality. Like there's scenes where things are kind of fantastical and you're trying, you're like seeing this weird stuff, but then Fantastic right, realism? yeah, right at the very end of that said scene, it'll be reality that explains everything. Is it funny? There's sort moments. Of. It's not. I don't see it intended to be overly like hilarious funny. It's more or less <laughs> cute, it's funny, quirky. And, like and quirky, yeah. quirky, yeah. But it's it's really well done. All the actors do an awesome job of interacting with each other. There's actors in there. There's characters that you are gonna hate, like. But it's like okay in the sense of it all. It's Just like, watch the movie. Yeah. Is the is does the long shot feel gimmicky at all? No. 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 It's really good. Yeah. It it fucks with your passage of time. Mm. A little bit because we're so used to just skipping and every time it we feels see like that a cut. dream because you know time is <clears> passing <throat> but it doesn't pass. Like, Very weird. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, uh, Nini, recommendation? We saw a movie called The Imitation Game. The Ooh. Imitation Game, isn't that what? Uh, Benedict Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch. Yeah, but I thought, I thought it was Brandy Bird Combicomb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Blondie Bear Sniggerdoodle. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Um, Blondie Bear is Spike. All right. Ah, uh, yes. Um, truly, it's with uh, Benedict Cumbersnatch mm-hmm. and Kieran Knightley. Mm-hmm. And um, it's about, well, it's a sort of a, what do you call it, like a biography of Alan Turing and his... Biopic? Biopic, Mm. yeah. Mm. Of Alan Turing and his work with British intelligence for the development of um, the 
first the world's first computer, which was built to crack the Nazis' enigma, enigma machine, code, exactly. which was used to code all of the like intel spread yeah. across the radio waves during World War Yeah, II. it turns out they just needed native. <laughs> the Navajo did it. Like, well, we got this. Yeah. No. Um, <clears throat> that was a different code. I think. That was a different, different code. Yeah. Yeah. Different time. Very different time. Uh, um, yeah, it was, for, it was a good movie though. It was an absolutely incredible movie. Mm -hmm. The cinematography was top notch. It, it was. Beyonce. It was beautiful and realistic, and w in, at some points almost like otherworldly. The depictions of the war and, and things that were happening. Um, and uh, the acting, the acting was breathtaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't speak highly enough of this movie. I think it's the best movie I've seen this year. Really? Um, in, I include 2014 in that mm -hmm. too. It's an Oscar contender. Definitely add it to your list. Okay, good. Uh, Matt, recommendation, sir. Since we are watching something adapted from an anime, I'm going to recommend uh, or a manga that uh, everybody check out. If you like anim anime or manga, even if you don't like them. This one, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, is amazing. It's a it's an adventure and comic book about a family that's plagued by vampires that are created through these ancient Inking masks that people put on. And this like 17th century Englishman puts on the mask and he turns into like the worst vampire in the world. And he plagues this one family for generations. Huh. And it's a great show and it's a manga and an anime. <laughs> Sounds great. It's so there's a show, there's a movie, and there's comic books. Yeah, the, the movie was put out in the 90s, and the animation in it isn't as good as the TV show that's come out now. However, I think the uh, the animation from the 90s is more succinct, uh, and uh, I think better produced uh, in some ways. And it's very funny because like the whole show, all of the enemies are sort of based, uh, their powers are sort of based on... Uh, artists that were popular, musical artists that were popular at the time. So there's a character named Lisa Lisa of Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam. <laughs> there's Vanilla Ice is one of the enemies. Oh my god! Yeah, oh my I've totally god. seen these. Yeah. So is this, isn't there a fighting game with JoJo? Yes. Two. Yeah, yeah, there's two actually from Capcom that came out in the 90s and there's a mo more modern one that was made by Namco, I believe. Uh, so I've totally yes. seen those characters. Yeah. Oh, they're very popular in Japan. It's one of the most popular animes in Japan. But, hmm. uh, it's uh, it's not really so popular here uh, because I think the English there's no uh, dub mm -hmm. of it of the new one. Yeah, and mostly fan subs out there. Uh, yeah, well, I, I think Crunchyroll has official subs for them. So if you want have Crunchyroll, go watch it. That sounds good. Cool. What are you doing? And Gloria recommends eating the top of your dried apple container. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she recommends that every week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so my recommendations finally. Uh, would be a, a reading one, quote unquote reading, graphic novels. I started reading Preacher for the first time, oh, nice. and it is amazing. Yeah. You know what Preacher's about? It's about a priest who's um, losing his faith, and just as he's uh, he's losing his faith, he uh, meets up with an old girlfriend he had, and uh, a hundred of year old uh, English vampire guy who's, who chain smokes. Is it from the same? It's not from. Oh. It's like an American thing, and basically, what happens through a. a Roundabout things, he gets the power of God. And he learns that God fucked off after creation was gone. So he's decided he's going to use his powers of God to track down God and fi ask him, "What the fuck? Why, like did, supernatural. why did you leave us?" Yeah, it's. I've read the first uh, sort of graphic novel collection. It's funny. The art is great. It's it's super it's super engaging. I tore through it one night. Highly recommend it. Yeah, preacher. Sweet. Uh, I think that's everything we have going on there. So I don't know what we're watching next. We must be getting close to uh, Fortress. Or the House Frighteners. On Hill. House on Haunted Hill. I think that's later on. Yeah, the remake. Yeah. yeah. I just leaves us to say you can reach us at finetoothpodcast at gmail.com. My name is Jamie. My voice sounds like this. My name is Janine, and my voice sounds like this. My name is Matt. My voice sounds like this. My name is Bunny. My voice sounds like this. My name is Shandy. My voice sounds like this. And I'm Jake. My voice sounds like this. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.